And good afternoon and welcome back to Thursday. What's happening? So I missed last week. Um, I was in Salt Lake City having a blast with um, uh, the people from uh, Willie's Garage, Sherry Canlon and Bill Williams and um, just just an amazing time. Had a really, really great time. Taught a class on Thursday, which was fun. And then we ended up um, doing uh, the show on Saturday. Uh, so it was just it was just a great time. So we're back. We're all ready to go. So what we have today is I'm working on uh, this Harley windscreen uh, for my buddy Mark. Uh, so I'll show you that in a second, and we'll just jump right into it. It's a lot of um, Createx, uh, both wicked colors, uh, the opaque colors, as well as um, the candy 2 So that's what I got. And um, yeah, let me switch around, and we'll get right to it. All right, so this shouldn't be here, so we'll move that there. Turn that back on so you can see everything. And see how far out we can get with this because you're gonna be pretty far out for this let's try I don't need that there we'll figure out where we're going here that's probably good right there how is everyone doing today hopefully pretty well Max what's up Bill how you doing Excellent, excellent. All right, let me focus this up here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this one. That's going to work. Okay. So, yeah, so what we have here is this is a standard Harley windscreen. And um, if you watch the Monday Night Feed, I started putting the, the flag on it. It's just a really loose design, even though it's masked off. It's, it works out pretty well. Uh, let me actually switch over to here, so maybe I can get some. Let's see, I can comments from over here. Might be a way to go. Comments everywhere. There we go. Yeah, that works. That way I can see them a little better. It's still behind the windscreen over here, but that'll work. Um, okay. So what I did, if you didn't catch the Monday live feed on Facebook, uh, I. I had all the FBS gold mask cut out. Um, I just uh, transferred it onto the gold mask with Sorrel paper, and then I cut it out by hand and then laid it out on the, the windscreen. The windscreen was already painted. The whole area was painted kind of a foggy white. Uh, so when I peel these up, all the stars and, and white stripes will still be white. And then I painted in the gray. So now you're caught up. So what I'm going to be doing from here is I'm going to be just keeping the reference. This is the little reference that I have here. I'm going to be keeping this fairly close by. Actually, I have another copy of this that's higher in, where is it? I raised the um, the overall color of it. Here we go. This is one of them. Not the color, but I raised the value of it so I could see all these little folds. So that's kind of what I'm going to be using for reference as we go. And uh, that's it. So you're just hanging out with me while, I, while I'm working on this and that's what I got. I thought I had. Let's see if I can find them. I had. I did have a couple other copies. This will definitely get me started, though. All right. So what I'm going to be using for the shading. So what you're seeing now is opaque white and black. So all this gray and all this stuff is just opaque white and black. But what I'm going to be using for all the shading is the Candy 2.0. So that's from Createx as well. So this is um, um, aniline dye based color from Createx. So it actually has no solid pigment in it. It's like a dye, which is very cool. So it really works like an actual automotive candy. Um, it comes in basically um, unreduced. It's really thin. It's like an ink, uh, but it also has no binder in it. So you got to add a binder to hold it together. All right. So that's what we got there. Um, some comments over here. Hello, everyone. Cody, what's going on? Shine, Travis, what's happening? And what else we got? Uh, good. There we go. All right. So, yeah. So, hello to everyone. Hello, hello. So, what I've done, um, the candy black that you can get from Createx, uh, it's really neat. Uh, a lot of the candy line was developed in part with Craig Frazier. And if you know Frazier's work, um, when he does anything with uh, black, um, it has a purple cast to it, so I think as a nod to him, when they developed the candy black, they made their candy black with that same purple cast. 
Um, for this one, I tend to like it a little bit cooler, like a bluish cast. So I've mixed up um, what I call Candy 2O Slate Black. So what I've done is I've taken the Candy Black and added green to it. Now I know that sounds weird, but green is opposite of purple on the color wheel, so it cancels out the purple and gives it more of a slate grayish blue cast. So that's what I got there. Now this is straight Candy 2O, so I'm going to have to add 4050 to it, but um, it's working out. I got tons of comments over here, but no comments over here. So I'll just be bouncing back and forth. If you guys have any questions, I'll try to keep an eye on it. And I'm just going to kind of mess with this today, um, see what we can come up with. Um, happy end of work for my friends in the UK. That's why we do this feed, so that you guys aren't up all night. So if you guys are cheering with me, that's awesome. For today's cheers, though, I have Gatorade, <laughs> which is not very exciting, but um, it'll work. Sweet. All right, I'll think I'll use the, I could use the Micron B, but I'm gonna to try to cover a little bit more area. You know what, I, eh, yeah, I'll use the C. I was gonna use the B, um, just cause it, it works great with the, with the candies, just cause it's such a small o nozzle opening. But um, I can mix up a little bit more of the candy in the bigger C, my, the bigger Micron C, so the cup is a little bit larger, so <clears throat> we're going to do that. Should turn this down a little bit. Simon, I think I caught you, so hello. Jim Beam on deck, good for you, Simon. That's what I want to hear. Mm. I will get into the habit of um, day drinking with my <clears throat> UK friends on Thursday. So that's, uh, you know, we'll try to try to get that done because I don't want you to cheer alone. All right. So there we go. So that's all cleaned out. I should have had that cleaned out before. But if you guys haven't seen, um, I started a new painting for the open studio on, fa on YouTube. Um, so we're doing an old Harley painting. So I, I was actually working on that before I jumped on with you guys. So I still had the color mixed in. So the uh, part three just dropped today for that Harley painting. Uh, so I'm trying to keep ahead of them. So I'm actually filming part four for next week today. So that's how that's going. Let's see why I don't have, there we go. Tone, what's up? There we go, now I get the comments. All right, so slate black. So again, this is 100%, this is just, just Candy 2O mixed in here. There's no 4050. So I'm going to put a few drops of this in here. Well, I should put a bunch in because I'm going to be using it for a while. And then to add to that, I'm going to add the 4050 to it. So I have the 4050 already mixed up. Where is my, the one I want here? I'm going to give it a little bit of body, but I'm also going to add a little bit of reducer to it. So I use a one to five mix. This is one part 4050 to five parts reducer. So it's going to add a little bit of reducer to this as well. Oops, this is all closed. Um, so it'll, it'll lighten up the uh, viscosity a little bit as well, which is nice because it gives, you, gives me a chance to um, kind of get some really tight details and some fine um, atomization with it. Steve, you're doing your class at Coast Airbrush next year and bringing Marge. Yes, um, it looks like f we're hoping February. Dave is going through a bunch right now, um, setting things up, but it looks like February. As far as Marge coming with me, I would love that. Um, it's going to depend on what she has going on. She actually graduates, um, graduates, gets her degree in, in December, so it's going to be a busy winter for her, so I'm not sure. I'd love to have her come with me, but that's, that's what we're doing. Franz, what is up? Globe Airbender, I love it. That's great. Yeah, Steve's going to bring his 27 bucks. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Oh, man. All right, so let me spray this out on this white sheet so you can see it. But as I spray this, I'm going to have to increase the pressure a little bit. You see how that's like a slate blue? So now if I sprayed regular, I don't have it here. It's on the other side. But if I sprayed regular Candy 2O Black, it looks like this, but it just picture that with a purple cast. So by adding the green to it, it cancels that out and makes it that grayish slate blue, which is, which is good because this whole thing is kind of a muted 
slate blue. Now, if you missed, again, if you missed the Facebook thing, you see how the, the mask just kind of stops here, along here and here. I'm going to basically backfill this whole thing with the, the windscreen is black. So I'm going to basically backfill when I take all the mask off black all around the edge and pull it into about here. So in the end, the flag is only going to appear in about a three inch swipe across the middle of it. So that's why I'm not worried about masking anything off for these edges here. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, there we go. Tone, I loved your post about not taking commercial um, commissions and then what that would mean for, for what you do. I know, I know a lot of what you do is driven by uh, commissions. And um, man, I hear you on that. You know, it, it, man, it could be a drag. It could be a drag. I mean, you know, everyone loves to paint for, you know, for everyone. But, um, but man, sometimes it's just rough. I wonder if you guys should be closer for this. So again, I have a gray. I mean, I'm going to move you closer because it doesn't make any difference to see. I mean, the whole thing if you're missing it. I should probably slide. I know what I'll do. Slide this over too. Do a little bit of readjusting here. That's why I love, love, love this um, Visionaire setup. Um, you could just you could just adjust things any way you want. So I'll move this out here like this, and we'll put you guys above there. Start working on the details on this. That's better. Yeah, you get a much closer look there. Painting while I'm watching. Good, Bill. Bill, that's awesome. I missed what green was added to Candy Black and how much. Simon, I will, um, it's probably better if I post the f actual formula for that, but it's just, um, I think it's Candy Emerald Green is the green I used. So it's Candy Black and Candy Emerald Green, and I might have added a little bit of blue to it, but I don't think I did. Um, but that's that's what I did to make it into this slate black. It just cancels out the um, the purple in it. All right, so I've got the reference photo here, and all I'm doing now is just going to start putting in all this the the darker details on on the folds and the and the you know the the wrinkles in in the uh, gray. So yeah, okay. What I was what I was just hesitating on was you know there's a moment where I'm going to have to pull all the mask because if I don't then you know obviously the white's not going to have any any shadowing in it um, but that's not quite ready for that yet so I'm going to hold off on that I'm going to need a freehand shield here somewhere here we go anything will work as soon as I can grab one all right yeah no problem Simon I wish I, I should have um, I should have. In, in anticipation of this feed, I should have um, been ready for that, but it's on the other side because I mixed this up a while ago when we first when they first had the candy. I was like, ah, I need a, a bluish gray version of it, or just a standard, you know, uncolored version of it because the purple's nice, but it's definitely like if you need just a black black, um, the purple you know adds a lot to it. So. Yeah, tone. That's 100% it. And not only that, I mean, it's. I mean, I love. I love people, <laughs> but um, sometimes, man, when you're trying to create someone else's vision and they're not even sure what they want, um, you know, that can be that can be a drag, just because you're you know you're fighting someone else's vision and that doesn't always work. So. So I definitely hear you on that. And the right, the deadlines, the deadlines blow. I like throwing in little loose white threads when doing flags. Yeah, absolutely, Travis. Yeah, it's all those details. This, um, you're gonna see a lot of the threads in the blue area up here. Um, so that's that's a lot of fun. This one, it's funny. We were talking about this one on the feed. Um, this design is is again, it's designed to be real quick. Um, I don't want to spend like an enormous amount of time on this because what happens is these these um, jobs for my buddy Mark, um, he sells really, not inexpensively, but they're not super high end. So we try to keep them fast. Um, the horn covers are really fast. Like when I have a group of designs I do for those horn covers, the Harley horn covers, and they 
you know, if I can keep them to about a half an hour, you know, 20 minutes, that's, that's all it is. So they are super fast. But the idea is just like the, you know, sort of like the 543s, um, he's able to sell them for not a lot of money, you know. And that's great. You know, someone who doesn't have a ton of money but wants to add a little bit to their bike, you know, a little bit of um, like a custom paint type feel, it's not going to cost them an arm and a leg. So the same thing with this one. While we're doing this, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to spend like 50 hours on it. So, but things like, yeah, Travis, things like those little loose white threads, they make, they're easy to do and they make so much of an impact on the painting. You know, it really adds a lot of interest to it and makes it look real. I think I'm going to reduce this a little bit more. So the Candy 2Os, if you watch Create Tex's um, YouTube channel with Chris Arpin, it's really, really good. And he does a lot of videos with the candies. Um, one of the big things with spray guns um, and larger opening, um, you'll see him talk about it a lot. Very rarely does he reduce these candies when he's spraying them out. Uh, but he's also using a spray gun with them. Um, so the, the thinness of the candies are what really allows this um, to spray without reducer th through a spray gun. But through an airbrush, you, you can reduce them if they're not quite spraying the right way. So what I'm looking for is just a really, really perfect, like just invisible atomization. There's no graininess to it at all. And then once I hit that, I've got a bunch of this in the cup. So once I hit that, I'm, I'm pretty much good to go. And I'll be able to do, you know, all of this. And then what I'll do is, depending on how much time we have, I'm going to put in all the details on the gray. Then I'm going to pull all the, um, the, the stripes so that I can do the same thing on the white and keep it all looking consistent. These are obviously, if you didn't realize, I just said it. These are the white stripes, the ones that are covered. And the ones I'm doing now are the red stripes. And of course, this, um, this whole image is um, black and white. This is uh, the idea behind this was you have this kind of monochromatic flag. So this has been a really popular, popular image to put on the, something like this. We do this on the horn covers too. There's a black and white flag that goes on the horn covers. Just a really kind of a different look and it, it just, it, I don't know, it really looks nice. And it's subtle too. When I backfill all this with the black all the way around it, like I said, it's just like a three inch strip that goes across the windscreen with the with the flag on it. And it's it's pretty nice. Works out well. And then um, I didn't mention it before, but what happens is Mark will take these windscreens, paint them black, and then clear them and then sand them, and that's how I get them. So that's the base on this. And then when obviously when he gets it back, he'll he'll re clear it too. So but back to tone and the deadlines, yeah, that's that's really it. And it's f funny when it's, you know, I mean, again, you, you try to, it, it's, it's a blessing being able to do this, period. But, man, you know, there is, there is it's, it can be a drag when you have, you know, this severe deadline on something that you're really not into, you know, as far as painting. Um, it, it could just be rough. You know, when you have, when you're trying to get something done that you really love, you know, that you're doing and you're vested in, that's a whole different thing. You don't mind spending, you know, 18 hour days on it, but, um, but man, it's tough if you're not into it. William Klein, what is up? Yeah, so thank you all for hanging out with me on Thursday. I know it's, it's an odd time for my friends in the U.S. You know, I'm, I'm coming on pretty much in the morning and on the West Coast. And, um, you know, right in the middle of the day for the rest of the country. And, um, you know, I know we said we started this for all my UK friends, my, my Greenwich Mean Time friends. So I really appreciate everyone jumping on. And, you know, I'm trying to build this, this U new YouTube channel and um, you guys being on and commenting and liking and sharing. That's, it's huge. Really does, uh, really, really does mean a lot. Not much cool, William. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Today is uh, today would have been my parents' 60th. My dad passed away in May. You know he's still with us, so 
um, talked to mom today and she's doing okay and yeah it's just uh it's, it's one of those days Franz and Africa friends yes Franz what time is it there now do you guys what um what time zone are you in I, I I'm, I'm not I'm not familiar with my like how how Africa lines up with uh, GMT Just it took me a while with the Monday feed because we have a lot of Australians on. So I'm just figuring out, uh, you know, the Australian time difference, which is fun because it, when we start the feed at six on at Eastern time, um, they're just getting up in the morning. It's like 9 a.m. Oh, so it's middle of the night. All right, Franz, I got to figure out the uh, a good um, a good time for. Um, Africa and um, Eastern a Eastern Asia would be nice. Try to cover everyone. All right, so you guys, yeah, you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to move the camera just a bit so you don't see as much of the star field and more of the flag part, which I'm working on now. But see how nice this steel gray tone uh, candy is compared to the, uh, you know, the, the the opaque white and black that it's on. It just has this nice, the kind of a kind of a well, like I said, steel gray kind of cast to it, which is good. Although, actually, yeah, 1900 is um, not bad. It's about dinner time there too. So okay, so we're not bad. This one o'clock works for you guys too. Okay, again, you know, these freehand shields are just brilliant for kind of working out these um, edges here. And Bill, I don't know if you're still on, um, but, you know, I know you're going through a bunch, but um, I hope you get back to it. Um, I love seeing your feeds on Tuesday. All right, so darken that up. I've got the main, you know, main folds here, and then I could start jumping back on this, um, the detail stuff. Straight candy black is nice with colored flags. The purple works with red and blue, but the color is awesome for black. But this color is awesome for black and gray. Yeah, Simon, it is, and it's that's the nice thing about the purple. Um, I know Scott, when he does a lot of flags, he adds a lot of just he likes a lot like a lot of blue in it. His gray is actually like a modified blue sometimes. Uh, so there are a lot of ways to kind of tackle this. Um, and it's nice once you know what's, what's in it, you know, how to kind of modify it to do what you want it to do. Oh, there you are, Bill. Good, yeah. Bill, yeah, I do. I really do hope, you know, you, things sort out and you can get back on your Tuesday thing because I, I enjoy that. It's a, it's, a nice, it's a nice end of the day for me, you know, to kind of hang out. What I've been doing during the summer, Bill, when you were running your feeds, is I would take my phone out and um, just, we have a big fire pit. And it's not really like a you know fancy fire pit. It's really where I burn all the leaves and everything. But still, it's really nice when you get a good fire going. So I usually take my phone out there and I was watching your feeds out there when you were doing that. So you're trying, I know, man, that's awesome. No pressure though, Bill, no pressure. <laughs> all right, so. I'm just kind of using the reference just to kind of get some, you know, get some of these details in here. Thank you to Aurora Graphics for this awesome file. Um, if you haven't seen Aurora Graphics, they have just about everything. It's just another, you know, photographic type website, and uh, you can buy individual images, and they're uh, they're not they're not that bad. I mean, as far as price goes, so um, so you can get just about anything you want. There are so many of them out there so it's just a matter of picking the one that you that you like all right so before i get too far into all this detail this is all going to be blacked out i'm gonna i'm gonna get it to the point where i can pull off the stripe masks because i want to be able to work the um, work the white stripes at the same time in a way 
So I'll finish up here, get the rest of the gray in on the main stripes here. And then, then I'll be able to move on to the other one. Now it's interesting because this looks like, even though it's kind of a light gray, it still really seems bright. When I pull, when I pull all this mask off, you'll see how bright the white is, but um, it'll give you a good indication of where we're going. I think that's going to be pretty good. I can work the rest of the details in because I, I don't want a super hard edge here either. So by, see all these details here? And when I put those details in here, they're going to kind of bleed over on the white and just kind of fuse everything together. Um, yeah, I don't have to worry about the white against the blue here or what should be blue. So that's okay too. So I think I can pull these off now. All right. The only reason I got to make sure is because there's no going back. Once I pull this off, they're off. Because this mask is really thin. So it um, once you once you pull it off, it curls up and gets all weird. So yeah, I mean if you're I don't know, I suppose if you're really talented you could save it, but I don't bother. It has done its job, so again this is what you're seeing is the white is um, oh yeah that's true yeah what you're seeing the white is autoborn sealer so that's not opaque white that's the autoborn sealer and I chose that because uh, because of its strength and the way that it adheres um, I knew I could mask on it and not worry about any of it coming off Trying to juggle being my wife's caretaker and, and many other personal things all at once. I love doing the feeds. Yeah, well, Bill, we really love watching them too. So, um, and you're um, of, of course you are absolutely doing the right thing. You know, take care of family first, uh, and we'll all be here when you're ready. All right. Isn't it fun? <laughs> yeah, unmasking, it's like Christmas time. There we go. All right. So there we go. So already it's coming together. That's nice. And again, you know, these edges, these, you know, the edges around are all going to be gone. They're all going to be blacked out. So not worried about it. All right. So back, basically just rinse and repeat from here on out. But now what I can do is as I start kind of tucking in these details on the, on the red, I can also pull them down into the white. Same thing with these, with these like bigger areas of shadow. I can start putting them in the white as well. I've already started them in the gray, so I don't have to, you know, add too much onto them, but I can just kind of tuck them in on the white now too. The white doesn't have too many of those stitching details. I could add them. So um, but again, it's all gonna I'm gonna back you guys, we'll try to back you guys out again. Um, I didn't realize how big this thing was. Um, so again, it's, it's how much time I want to spend on this, really. Um, you know, it's, it's, we want to make it look good, want to make, you know, give us enough detail and stuff like that. But, um, but again, I don't know that I really want to spend a million hours on this. I don't want to spend a million hours on this because it's, it's really got to be done. So, um, so it's just a matter of kind of finding that balance of the details and and you know, and, and and keeping it you know under eighty hours. <laughs> Be nice, you know, if someone wanted a job like that. But um, but yeah, Let's try to find a good compromise here on the white. And what's nice about this slate blue too? All right, so 
Say I was using the straight candy black here. So the, I, I know the opaque white and black will give this kind of slate color like you see everywhere else. Um, so if I had that as a base, all that, and then I came in with the candy black just the way it is out of the bottle, the purple would light up on these white stripes. So everything else would have this cool kind of, you know, coolish, grayish, slateish kind of color because of the blue in the, in, the, in the gray color here. But if I put that candy black on the white, it would totally look purple. So that's why I use this slate black on the white as well. Hopefully that means that makes sense. Thanks, Bill. And I will, I will post my formula for the slate black too. So you guys have it. And like I said, it's pretty easy. I think I just added green to it. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not rocket science by any stretch. So the same would hold true for every single flag, because it's since you're doing these as, you know, monochromatic thing, it's, it works the same way. You know, what you do is um, to make your life easy, especially on a complex flag, um, just make a photocopy of it and see what it looks like in, in, in black and white. Um, and then that'll help you kind of determine what, you know, what's going to happen with it. I think I probably reduced this a little too much, which is okay. Because I can always add a little bit of candy to it to get it pumped back up. Wicked Smoke Black. So, Jeff, what's going on, man? Um, so, the only difference with, um, with any of the other colors from the Illustration line or the Wicked line is that they're pigment-based. They're, I mean, they're dye, uh, pigment-based. Yeah, not dye-based. So, any of those colors are going to have some body to them. Again, for shading like this, that you know, you could reduce the wicked black or the illustration black, and it would be transparent, you know. But this stuff is 100% transparent. It, it's a candy, so it's a little bit different animal overall. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, those. If I had just come up with a you know opaque black, but then reduced the crap out of it like I normally do, I could do the same kind of thing I'm doing here. But it would, it would build up. This will always show through. So, you know, so no matter how I spray this, the, the color underneath will always play a part in it, which is kind of neat. So, that's that. So again, just throw in some of these stitching-like details and these like mini folds that are in the, that are in the material. So that, so Jeff's question was awesome, and, and this is a good example of where the candies excel. When you're doing a shade over different values, like white and, and black, it will, it will have less of an impact. It'll look more like, like, like shading than maybe a more opaque color. The more opaque color will affect each color differently, so it'll kind of cover faster on the darker stripes. But the candies really move very slowly in the way that they build up. So that, that really helps out a lot. But again, you know, I, I mean, I made a career out of using the opaque black and, you know, just kind of reducing it out like crazy. So it's, you know, not that it, it's not that you, you know, can't do it. It just has a different, a different effect, you know, it has a different look between the candies and the uh, and the other colors. So it's more much more like a watercolor with the uh, with the candies. On average how many hours a day do you airbrush? It's a great question, Bill. Um, so what I try to do because you know when you're doing this and this is it. Um, there's a lot of other responsibilities that need to be done. So I try to bust my week up into thirds. Um, and, you know, a third of it is actually producing artwork or painting. Uh, a third of it is just admin stuff, you know, doing, 
doing the paperwork and you know coming up with what the next next project is and that kind of thing any planning and all that fun stuff um, and then and then the, the other third is promotion so it's you know anything that will promote the brand essentially so with that being said um, I mean I'd love to just paint all the time and that's it but it doesn't really work out that way so usually on a day that I'm painting that I've put aside to paint um, I'll, you know, I could put anywhere from you know 10 to 12 hours in on that day, um, but it seems like I, I have the airbrush in my hand at least every day. So on the on the other days where I should be doing other things, you know, maybe it's you know only about an hour or two hours um, because I'll be doing other stuff, running around or you know shipping orders or whatever it is. Um, so so I'd say anywhere from you know like I said two hours on a on an off day to eight to ten hours on a on a big day so so today is about a half and a half I spent a lot of time framing this morning um, doing the videos was another big thing um, so I'll probably spend about four hours today airbrushing unless of course I just start jumping on the 543s for next Monday and then uh, then that could turn into a, a bunch of time so there's your super long answer <laughs> breaking news from UK Queen Elizabeth passed away peacefully this afternoon unbelievable Simon holy moly wow that changes a whole bunch of stuff well I'm glad it was peaceful Wow. The life, I mean, you think about, you think about what that woman's seen and what she's been involved in, in as far as just world history, and it's just staggering. She's just been a part of, she's been a part of things for a really long time. That's, that's crazy. Oh, no doubt, Simon. No, oh, thanks, Tone. Yeah, it's, well, Tone, do you know, man? You're, that's all, you know, it's every day for you, you know? It's like, it's, it's that balance, you know, that, and it, it is, you know, if you get into, I had this discussion in, in Salt Lake City um, with one of the, with one of the guys, you know, asking questions about, you know, how to, how to trans, how to go from part time to full time, and um, and the answer is easier than than most people think. You know, it's it's like any self self run self employed business. I mean, you're you're it's it's what it is. You're selling a product. You know what I mean. Um, so as soon as you're ready to sell that product, that's that's when you're ready to go full time. You know, it's. It's it's interesting because you know with with art it's it, you seem it seems like there's a lot of you know like you know, when will when will my recognition allow me to go full time but it's never like that um, it is way more that you know once you have a solid product you know your artwork is to a point where it's it's um, it's it's good quality you know which doesn't take long to get to a point where you're selling something that's a decent you know quality piece. Um, then it just becomes, you know, a matter of, and this sounds cold, but it's, it's a matter of marketing it. It's, it's how well you market it because there are people who produce, <coughs> excuse me, um, artwork that maybe isn't really that good. And I don't even mean like talent wise, I'm, I'm strictly talking about effort, effort applied to the art. You know, there's some people who sell some stuff that's like really just not good. You know, and they, and, you know, for the most part, they know it. They they know they're not making museum quality art. They're just producing stuff to sell, and that's perfectly cool. The thing is, is yeah, it's where the, the 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 division comes from. You know, in your mind, a lot of people think, well, I have to have like gallery ready stuff before I can start selling it, and that's not entirely true. It's really got to look at it a little bit more coldly. You know, do you have a product that will that will meet the demands or meet the, the problems of, of the people out there. And, you know, problems, using quotes, 
you know, quotation marks around problems. Someone has a, a you know, a spot on their wall that they really need a, uh, something to put on there. They need to finish their, you know, the, the look of their house. It's a problem they have to solve. And the trick is, is to find those people that your art is their solution. So that's what it is. And like I said, it, it you know, I mean, if you, being successful to you means that you hang in the Museum of Modern Art in New York, well, that's a whole different thing. You know, it's a whole different thing than, than, than producing enough artwork so that you can pay your bills and, you know, have insurance and, you know, r maybe retire someday or whatever your, you know, ultimate plan is. It's a whole different animal than what, you know, what you may want as far as professional success, like, you know, do my peers look up to me and all that. That's a whole different thing than just going full time with your art. Because look at, you could do anything and make your own business out of it, you really, you know? And it's it would take the same breakdown and the same effort that it would be if you're an artist or whether you're selling, I don't know, keychains on the side of the road or lemonade or whatever. It's, it's really strangely similar in, in the way that the small business will be run. So there we go. Sorry. Yeah, Simon. No, 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 no problem. No problem. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I, you know, it's funny. I hated history in, in grade school, but, um, but I cannot get enough of it now. It's weird. I watch like all these history documentaries, especially on like the world, world war two era. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a blast. So yeah, no, no, no. Like I said, yeah, she's been in everything. All right, so while I've been yakking, you kind of see how this is going together. It's just a matter of just kind of floating all these sh uh, sh this shading in. Now, of course, this part of the rolled flag, you know, is, is brighter. So I, I specifically left doing any work on this side right here. Uh, so now I'll jump to this side, and now I'll just put lighter shading. So this part really comes forward, and this part will stay behind. Okay. Problem I have is I, uh, I paint what I like once it's done. It's like my baby and I can't sell it. That is, that's actually a good problem because <laughs> that's solvable, but you are, you're, you're right. You should be painting what you like. You, the trap and tone kind of alluded to this too with, with the problems with working for uh, commissions is when you do a commission, you're not necessarily doing what you want to do. You know, I get it. You have to sell your stuff. So sometimes when you have to sell your stuff, you have to do stuff that you don't really want to do. And that's just the way it is. Ultimately, yeah, it'd be great to be able to just paint what you want to paint and then sell prints or originals of just your stuff. You never take a commission, but, um, but that's hard to get to that point. Um, and then as far as selling it, yeah, absolutely. You know, they, they are. You put so much of your heart and soul in them that when it comes time to sell them, it's like, <laughs> I do know that feeling. Some of the bigger paintings that I have, like the New York painting was one. Even though it was great when that sold, it was like, Oh, that's like a that's like a huge part of me going out the door. So I guess that's again, it comes down to, you know, if if you're just if you if you're doing art to be an artist, then that's awesome. Um, but if you're doing it as a career, then yeah, you have to get over that. <laughs> I forget who told who said it to me, but it's like uh, you know, and it's my answer now when people say, you know, how much is that or is that available? It's like everything you do is for sale, basically. That's kind of how it works. You get into it like I get into it when I start. And that's the idea. You know, that's that's where I'm at. It's like when I start a new painting, if I start with the intent of, you know, making sure that I'm OK, that when the time comes that that's going to sell. And then when you start out with that kind of feel, you know, it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to let it go. All right, there's a couple little details. This, this corner of the flag didn't quite match up really nicely, so it's got a kind of an odd, like kind of an odd hook in it, like a little hinge, not a hinge, a little, little spike right there. So I'm gonna take that out. Just gonna use a freehand shield here and then just gray it out, just fill it in. And what I can do is to kind of preemptively start hitting the, the blue. I can start by putting some of those little folds and stitches in in the corner here too. So that'll kind of fix that whole misalignment that went on there. 
like that. Minor, but makes makes a difference. All right, the same thing here. This little guy doesn't quite line up. So I'm going to take care of that right now. Uh, I don't want to take care of that. It's maybe a two-shielder for this one. Yeah, it is going to be a two-shielder. So. I just want that little triangular wedge in there. And the same thing, I'm going to just kind of feather that into the other section up here, like that, so that it's a little bit harder to see. Chris Garcia, Chris, your frames went out, or your artwork went out today, so you should have that in a few days. All right, so some shading in this too. And a little bit of shading on the this on this leading edge here, just so it rolls over a little bit, but not again, I want this to be really bright white here, so I want that to look like it's really popping out. Again, this guy down here, no, almost none of this is going to show. So I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but just in case it shows, I'll add the bulk shading to it so that you know so that you'll be able to see it if some of it does show. But again, I don't want to spend like hours on this just to black it all out. And then down here, same thing, I want to add some of those wrinkly shadows. And that's about it, because I want, again, I want this to be super, super bright. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Chris, I was really happy. I didn't realize you were sending prints, too. That was fun. I, I enjoyed framing those, too. That was, that was a lot of fun. So that, you know, brings up a good point. So Chris, um, Chris had gotten a couple prints from me, and uh, he wanted them framed. There is a framing item on the website for those, you know, either the prints or the 543s. So if you buy a painting, uh, like a 543, but you want it framed, you could just add that item in and, um, and it'll, it'll it, it's nice. In the, in the 543s, it's actually an add-on. You'll see the, the pull-down window on the 543, so you can add it right there. But if you buy a print, you can actually add the separate ship, uh, the separate framing um, option or item. And then um, depending on how many prints you want framed, you just buy the same number of uh, same number of uh, framing items. And then that'll get you, you know, I'll, I'll frame everything up for you. And what's really nice is the way that they're framed. Um, they have, you know, they're ready to hang on the wall. They've got wires on them and they're dust jackets on the back. And I re-sign the back. So the title of the piece and even the print. And uh, there's an additional signature on the back. So. It's a nice setup. It works out really well. You guys, you all, I'm kind of off this screen here, but I'll work down here a little bit. I could put a few, you know, those wrinkly details in here, but I really want to keep this, you know, pretty, pretty free of stuff because I want, like I said, I want that to really pop forward. Awesome. This red stripe down here though is going to get it's going to be kind of in the middle of everything so I want to put some details on this I want to make sure I get this pretty detailed and again right here is the absolute center of the windscreen so that's going to get a lot of you know a lot of the attention on this so putting a little bit of extra details in here uh, works out really well I am going to, I think I'm going to thicken this up a little bit though, because I, I had it really super thin for all this shading over here, but when working on the, um, on the gray to put those details in, this is actually a little bit too thin. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the candy, but I'm not going to add any of the binder or reducer. I want that a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. Yes, yes, that's much better. So now that, now I can really like 
get those dark details in real quick. I've already got all the, the shading that I need to do on, well, not really, but down here. But all this shading is already done. So, um, so now I can just work on the, on the gray again. And now that this candy is a lot stronger, like more vibrant, I guess, more, you know, it has more guts to it, I can quickly get these, these smaller details in. I'm not trying to build them up with, um, with a really thin paint. Yeah, these candy 2Os are, they're a lot of fun. I don't get to use them as much as, you know, I'd like because of the way that I paint on the other stuff. But um, when a job like this comes in, um, they're, just, they're just so much fun to use. Oh, God. You don't want to do that, Bill. Yeah, Marge was uh, just in New York City with all you guys. Um, her schedule was slammed, though. It was part of a school, part of the, you know, the, the part of the school thing. So it was a degree. It was part of her degree that you know she goes and goes to all the museums and everything with the, with with the school. So she was pretty much flat out the whole time. But uh, she had a great time. Honey, what is up? I'm in the process, speaking of framing, um, I'm in the process of um, reframing the drawing that, that Honey had sent me, which is, uh, in a way, Honey, I'm, I'm glad it got damaged because um, cause when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I have, I have just the idea for this. So, so and it's funny because um, um, Marge's mom, or actually Marge's dad, before he passed away, had gotten these beautiful... Japanese, I don't know what they are. It's Japanese art. I don't know what it's on. It's like this really thin rice paper. They're beautiful. So Marge's mom uh, asked if I'd frame them. So um, I said, of course. So uh, so I'm going to be framing those for her, but I want to kind of do the same thing with your drawing that I'm going to be doing with these Japanese prints. So the timing actually was perfect. I uh, sent Bill a bunch of FBS because he's never used it before. So, oh, there we go. Okay, in that case, yeah. I love, love me my FBS. Yep, it's great when, you know, you have a product that was meant for the automotive industry, but it works fantastically from, you know, like a fine art standpoint. As far as conservators go, you know, a good automotive painter is just as good as a fine artist, maybe even better. You know, you think about how they, they, they do everything so that everything lasts forever. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty cool. All right, so that is good. So now I can move on to the star field. I think I'm going to leave that there, pull the stars, do the blue area, because um, there's, a, there's a bunch of stuff that goes on with that. Um, and then I can kind of look at the whole thing. So let me move the camera over a little bit more. This is nice. See, honey's here. So honey, see how much more we get done when I'm not giving stuff away and talking nonstop. I mean, well, you know, I'm talking nonstop, but not, you know, stopping everything to talk nonstop. And also, honey, another quick uh, note. Um, it turns out I missed that... Um, Ego had won the second week of um, January. He uh, he won a um, 543. So he he was his name was pulled because he was on there by accident. So I am actually going to give away two paintings next Monday. So Ego can't have two. So <laughs> which I'm sure he'll understand. But uh, so that'll be fun. I'll actually do another giveaway, um, an extra giveaway on Monday. So we gave away eight paintings on Monday. Well, seven really because of uh, the Yego thing. Um, so that was it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. All right, so I'll peel off all these stars here. Again, you know, there's things that could be done with these stars. You know, like to make them look like they're they're threaded and stitched. But um, again for what we need to do with this. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that. I mean, I might indicate the, um, that stitching on these stars, but again, uh, I think for the amount of time it's going to take and what the budget is for this, 
it's just going to have some shading across it. So, uh, Steve, what is the video that you did of the truck in the town? Oh, I don't. There isn't a video on that, Bill. I know what you're talking about. That's Kelly Ross's painting. Um, yeah, there's there. That was I just did. The, I think I'm wait. It, it might have been a live feed, Bill. Now that I'm thinking of it. But I didn't do a um, specific video of it, but it might have been a live feed where I was doing the asphalt, you know, the, the video of the, the road. I'll have to look back, but it would, I would, if I were to look for it, I would start with the, uh, the live feeds. And that was probably almost two years ago now. Kelly is a great guy. I met Kelly, actually I did his painting first. He had commissioned me to do a painting of his truck. And then, um, and then I met him at um, the Rendezvous in um, California last year. So, great guy. Yeah, Bill, um, if you don't find it before I do, I will um, send you a link to it. Uh, I, like I said, I don't remember. I'm, it's because I don't remember, I'm guessing that it was a live feed. Because I don't, you know... I don't keep the same track of the live feeds, what I did in them, as I do the other videos, like the, you know, the open studio and the time lapse and the Tech Tuesdays. I have a list of all those, but what I did in the, the um, live feeds, I don't. I'd have to look back, but I have a feeling I should be able to find it pretty quick. It was definitely on Facebook, though. I know that. And I do have in-process pictures of Kelly's painting, but I don't know how many videos I have. Sorry, you guys get to watch the fun of peeling up stars right now. Uh, yeah, good. But yeah, this FBS is so thin, it gives such a clean, you know, clean outline. And uh, doesn't, what's nice is if you don't hammer this thing, with a bunch of paint, I mean, this has this has very very little, like edge, you know. Where, no, so the white, obviously the white was first, so all the gray is you know painted around it. But there's almost no paint edge here, which is really great. Gold tape on the truck. Oh, okay. See, Bill, you know more than I do. I don't remember that, but I yeah. So that would be the same stuff. This KUTG gold tape, which I have found that. I love very, very much. <laughs> it is great. Um, you can, uh, it comes on a, you know, comes on a regular roll like this. Um, but it also comes on, um, like how I did this, it comes on a backing. So it comes on a bigger roll, but it has a backing material on, on it. So what you can do is what I did here is I actually cut out all these stars and then weeded it and then put a piece of transfer tape on and I was able to just place it wherever I wanted and peel the transfer tape off and all the, all the images were, all the you know, masks were where they needed to be. So the stuff is beautiful. Plus, you know, the, like, as you can see, the, um, it's very transparent. You're looking not only through the mask but through the backing paper too. So it's very easy to, like if you were to put this down, you could see right through it, which is really nice too. Yeah, so blue, that's it. So I don't know, I didn't see his feed, but I'm assuming he used either the blue mask or the green mask, which I think now come in sheets. So those, I know the green mask is even more transparent than this. So both of those are designed for like, you know, going around heavy curves and things like that, conforming really, really well. Um, yes, it's also on my list. I should, actually I need to place an order with Coast anyway. So I am out of yellow ochre, so I gotta take care of that. Yeah, Bill, you're gonna love it. And the one thing I found that I really, really loved about it, which is why I started using it a lot, was when I was painting on that Canson, the color line paper that, that uh, Tim uses, um, there wasn't a tape I could mask the border off without having it rip up the paper. So, um, you know, I had artist tape, I tried, I tried a bunch of stuff, and then the only tape that didn't pull up the, the paper was this FBS tape. 
So that's what's, like I said, that's funny. FBS obviously was designed as an automotive masking tape, but it works great for fine artists. And, uh, you know, I don't think they even realized it, so. Dan, what's up? Found this tape called Dell Dell Tech Gold, and it's very, very much like the FPS Gold, but cheaper. Oh, cool! Very, very cool. I love stuff like that. You know, you when you score on a win. I don't you. I mean, I all right. So I do use it a lot. Um, but but I don't go through a lot of it, you know what I mean? So even though I use it a lot, I, there's, there's specific usage of it. So for me, it's not, you know, I mean, it's still pretty much cost effective going with FPS all the time. That's interesting, Jeff. I didn't know that. So Jeff just said uh, the green mask will shrink if you don't spray it right away if there's heat. That's good to know, because that would suck. <laughs> and I'm sure Jeff found out the hard way, because that sounded like a hard way type answer. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Jeff Simon's work, check him out. I love his work. And um, if you go on um, Spray Gunner's um, YouTube channel when they're doing the, um, the tour, so they actually tour Jeff's studio, which is a lot of fun. Um, so a lot of good stuff there. Almost there, almost there. Three more, three more to go. These three are just about off the camera too. So Marge has a Roland plotter, a 24-inch Roland plotter. And so doing this design would have been a whole lot easier with the plotter, but things were crazy, so I ended up just cutting it by hand. Yeah, there we go. Bill, I did. I cut, I cut all the everything by hand, which is nice because it kind of shows you that if you don't, if you hadn't made the investment in a plotter, you can get away without it. You know, you can do a lot without it. But um, sure is nice to have one. So I, one of the other things I did too, um, Don Bruton had bought the Randy Rhodes painting. So he sent me a message, asked how possible would it be to frame that, but frame it with a, a you know, add polka dots to the frame. So to hand cut polka dots for the frame would have been a nightmare, but plotting them was really easy, so that was no problem. So yeah, it does solve a lot of issues. All right, now, speaking of solving issues, let me see if I can back this camera up a little bit so you get less of, less of the close-up, because I don't think we need that so much with this part. Like right about, maybe there. Yeah, and I'll raise this up a bit. Okay, so I've got the whole thing done now. So now it's just rinse and repeat. So there's a lot of um, same things, a lot of um, you know folds in here that that I'm just going to add in first. You know, bigger folds. There's a big crease right here, which is nice. So I'll roll that whole thing over, and then once I get that, there's another big fold kind of right here, and um, I get those two done, and then this whole thing is going to be pretty much in the bag. So easy peasy. Yep, I kind of went to apply it the next day and all the cuts opened up quite a bit. That, Jeff, that is really good to know. All right. So first, thing is, first things first. So what I should do, which would be smart, do I have two of these? I hope I have two of these. Oh, I do. Good. All right, I'm going to um, make a quick mask. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. 
All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a quick shield just so I can um, just so I can get that get that darker area in really really quickly. And I could use a um, freehand shield, you know, one of the one of the R tool shields. But um, this curve is pretty specific, so by doing it this way, I'll get just the right curve. So I just cut it out of the photocopy, and that part lines up with this part, y'all. Like, like that. So I'll just hold that in place, and be able to get the, the bulk of that shadow in first. So again, this candy does have some reducer in it. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of more than painting with the paint. I'm watching the, the, the sheen of the wet paint. So once it gets to a certain point, I give it a second to dry up. And you can see that it'll turn matte. I'm going to add a little more air pressure since I added to viscosity too. There we go. So again, so I, I put the next coat on, but I'm kind of looking. It's difficult for you guys to see because I'm at an angle and you're not. But I can see the wetness of the paint. I can see that sheen. So when it's nice and even, all the same kind of, you know, um, all the same kind of sheen, then, you know, then I can, you know, blow air onto it and kind of knock it down and let it all, let all those solvents evaporate the water, and then it's ready to go. So now when I pull that off, I have a nice line there. All right. This one kind of shouldn't happen that way. I missed that. I came out too far, but that's okay. Again, this is going to be blacked out anyway, so I'm not overly worried about it. So the second shadow comes in right about here. So we'll throw that big one in now. And then I can just kind of detail out the rest of it and be good shape. Of course, this back edge here, all this is going to be pretty much blacked out too. So, but I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it a start right now, just so I can give it a little bit of body. So I don't have to add a whole ton of detail in here. So, uh, specialty equipment is super nice to have, but many have voiced their frustrations with almost every DIY video implementing twenty thousand dollars worth of said special equipment. <laughs> Max, it's one hundred percent true. 100% true, yeah. All right. So yeah, so if you have a plotter, fantastic. If you don't, you don't need one. All right, so I wonder if I should, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm kind of freaking, not freaking out. I'm, it would be nice to fix that, but I have a feeling if I fix all that, none of it's gonna show, because I, I know it's gonna be blacked out. So I'm gonna just let it go as, Elsa said. All right. All right, so now, ooh, spraying by itself, not good. Yeah, so that's, that's huge, and Max knows. Um, it's so easy to, you know, to say how easy some things are, like, like Max said, when you have a, you know, $20,000 worth of equipment. Um, but, yeah. All right, so... And I am I am the king of to to a fault. I am the king of like MacGyvering things. Like not like it, I get so surprised when I like spend all this time like making something, building something, and then find out that you know they already sell something to do that exact same thing, and it's not a whole lot of money. So all the time and effort that I put into making this thing to save money, I would have saved a lot more money by just buying it. So is that Gary Shees? What's up? Does the camera need a little tweak, focus, or nice? No, what's going on too is it might, but um, we have all of it kind of in the in the frame here too. So how's that? That should be better. 
And plus, you got this huge highlight up there, too. Oh, so you don't even need that on there. Okay. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, Simon, that's like I keep saying over and over again. As soon as I figure out, you know, what the best camera is for this setup, I'm going to be buying buying that and getting that done. So what I what happened was um, when I got these cameras, they're all manual focus cameras, which are great, except for it would be nice for this one here, the main camera, to be an autofocus camera. And I didn't really think about it when I was buying the cameras. Um, uh, you know, I just thought, you know, it would be easy to refocus, but um, it's turning out to be a little bit more difficult than, um, than it should be. All right, so the details are on the stars. So this is kind of what we're talking about. You know, I could spend a whole ton of time doing, you know, all the stitching in the middle of the stars, which would be great for that kind of job, but this isn't that kind of job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate that kind of dent where the, where the star is kind of embroidered on. And, uh, and what I might do at the end is put in, you know, those stitching details. That's got it. Okay, good, good. So the stitching details, I'll show you one of these because these are the wiped out ones. And you guys have seen this a million times. So these stars really, if you look at them and they're embroidered, they're not just sewn on. Um, they'll have, make sure that's not going through. There we go. Um, so they'll have, you know, this kind of thing going on. They'll actually be like this. And, and each side, you can, like on the shaded side, you can actually see the embroidery. So that's the other way to kind of do that but again that takes time over all of these and again the idea behind this one is that it's it looks good but it's not you know it doesn't take a million million hours I have to laugh because usually on the DIY of something ridiculously simple and then they design it on the computer with the design software and then put it through their laser 3d printer CNC plot yeah exactly exactly And it's funny you say that because that's what I've been finding with the whole camera thing too. It's like, you know, I look up, you know, what's the best camera for live streaming? And, and I, seriously, I'll get, and I know I should be more specific, but I'll get these, you know, $2,500 cameras, which, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they're the best. And they're, you know, broadcast quality stuff, but, um, you know, I'm not quite there yet. I would love to have a complete set of Blackmagic cameras for this setup. Um, but that's going to take a little bit more return on investment <laughs> before I could do justify that kind of uh, kind of thing. All right, so you see what I'm doing here? I'm just extending these these little smaller wrinkles into everything. What I am doing is I'm avoiding the stars. I've got the stars. I've got the big folds, and they're all you know they'll go all across the stars. But these little folds in the blue, I'm just avoiding the, uh, the stars because those are, you know, they're not going to have those same wrinkles that the blue field will have. So, all for a $20 project. Exactly, Max. But that's me, you know, it's me in a nutshell. Because, I mean, not that I'll spend, you know, a ton of money on it. For me, it's more the time, you know, like I'll be like, Oh, I got a, I, oh, you know what it was? All right, I'll tell you what it was. So the, um, I have this buddy, Mike. Um, my, you guys have seen him on the Monday feed, Mike Stevenson. So Mike built me this little, this small, really cool, he's, he's a great carpenter, electrician, all around, you know, just, just great guy. So he built this really small spray booth for me that, um, that's really, really cool. So the idea is this is supposed to be vented outside. But I don't use it, you know, for like big projects, obviously, because it's a smaller spray booth. So I was going to rig up something that I could just have, you know, like a, it has a fan in it. So the fan would go to this filter system. And then, you know, I'm drawing up all these plans with like, like five gallon buckets and, and all these different, like, like different rings inside of the five gallon bucket that had a filter in each one. And drill you know drill giant holes and have clamps and all this stuff and I walk in the hardware store and they sell that they sell it I don't even know this so for if you have a dryer like a clothes dryer 
you can buy this filter that hangs on the wall that has filters in it and it just catches all the lint. And I'm like, oh, if I change the filters in that to something you know with carbon in it, that'll do exactly what I want it to do for like 10 bucks. <laughs> so yeah, I, I do that a lot. Thomas, what is up? All right, same thing here. As I get up in the top, I got to keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is going to be blacked out, so I got to stop myself from spending a whole bunch of time in there, putting all kinds of details that are just going to get blown up. I am going to add some along the edge down here just in case I, you know, I make a decision you know, to include a little bit more of it, although I know, I know, I already know I'm not going to. There we go. So I'll just bring it out on here. Again, avoiding the stars, just kind of keeping that in the blue field. And again, this slate blue or slate black works so well against this darker color. It just, it looks like just black, like black, black, which is nice. All right couple more in here and we're almost done. Same thing out here. This area here, this is all going to be, I'm going to use o, uh, regular opaque black to just just paint this, like the whole, basically the whole windscreen and then cut this all in. And I'll take a photo of this before it, you know, before I send it back um, so you guys can see it all done. But again, it's a nice, clean job. It looks really classy. Um, didn't take a whole bunch of effort. You know, it's, there was no, you know, total freak out. Um, and it, it, like I said, it just, it just comes out looking decent. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, blue, that's true. But sometimes it takes too long. <laughs> All right. I'm going to actually release, oh no I can't, yes I can, no I can't. I was going to release this camera and hold it back even farther, but I don't think I can do that. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah, that's about as far away as I can get. But I think you get the idea. I think you get the, 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 the full effect here. Um, yeah, I'm not going to black this out here. I'm actually going to use that small spray booth to black this out. The reason why I was going to show you a little bit of you know what it's going to look like to black this out, but um, but that's going to be a lot of paint flying around, and I don't want to do that. Um, so, but trust me, it's like I said. It, so the I'm going to cut it back into about like this, and it's going to be like an arc that goes across the top of the like the windscreen. So it'll be a section like this, and that's all it's going to show. But that's that's how it works. Pretty easy. When's the five giveaways? <laughs> Gary, I was just saying to Honey, um, Ego won the second week of January, the second, the second live feed of the year. I, I totally missed him. I don't know if I put him in as Ego the first time or if I had him as Diego. But anyway, so um, on Monday, I'm going to do the regular giveaway, and then I'm going to give away one more. So since Ego can't win, um, he was chosen on last Monday's feed by accident. So there'll be two. So that's it. Yeah, Max, that was it. And better, too. That little filter that I bought with the dryer duct and everything is better than anything I could have made. So that's really cool. All right. So that's what I got. So let me switch you back over here. Oh, maybe I'll, yeah, back you guys up. Hold on. Hello. So if I do this, pull this off, I can swing it around so you can see the whole thing. So that's what it looks like. Pretty straightforward. So again, picture that like just along this middle section, really. And that's how it looks. So there you go. So thanks for joining me for this. You guys actually, between Monday and today, you guys saw the whole thing. So again, um, you're looking at about a, what, two hour time investment for that. And, um, and it just, you know, it's a clean look. It just it works out really, really well. It's a nice design. And like I said, on a horn cover, I can do this in about 20 minutes because I have them all, I have the same cutouts, but they're, they're set up a little bit differently. Um, but I also have those on acetate. So where I did this one with adhesive mask, because it's so big, um, on the small horn covers, because I do a lot of those, um, I have them adhesive mask. So I, know, I have them in acetate. 
so I pre-cut those out in acetate. So I can do the same kind of thing um, that way. So it's pretty straight ahead. Pretty easy, but it looks good, and boom, done. So there we go. All right, so that is Thursday. Um, if you haven't checked it out and you're, you're on YouTube now, check out the Open Studio. Uh, that bike painting that I'm doing, I'm having a blast with it. It's going to be a lot of nitpicky, rusty type of painting, um, which is a lot of fun. And then if you're not on Facebook, jump on Facebook on Monday. We'll be uh, doing another live feed on Monday and giving away, I'm giving away two paintings because of, like we said, the mistake that happened last week. But uh, we always give away at least one. So that's what's going to happen with that. Um, I have not started the 543 paintings for Monday, so I don't even know what they are yet. Um, but hopefully they'll be good. That's what I got. All right, well, happy Thursday. Um, you guys have a great weekend. And um, yeah, thanks for coming by as always. And thanks for hitting that like button and the subscribe button and telling all your friends because uh, that's how we grow. That's what I got. All right, kids, thank you very much. And I will catch you all next week.